yeah, no Hyena here. So for today's video, I'm gonna do something that I haven't done in a while and usually don't do. I'm gonna open up and talk about my life a little bit. And yes, I know it was only three videos ago that I was making fun of apology videos. And this is not anything of that sort. I was just thinking with everything going on in the world at the moment, almost everywhere people are in self-isolation because of the coronavirus. I thought while some of my viewers actually have the time to watch a longer video, I just wanted to give our own a life update because moving forward, I expect to put out a lot more content than I have been recently. And I just wanted to explain the drop in uploads and interactions over really the last 18 months or so. So I titled this video, Why I Almost Quit for a YouTube, which is a pretty serious title. Perhaps it's a little clickbaity, but it really reflects that within myself over the last two years, there's definitely been times that I've questioned how much I want to do this. Let me just start by saying I love the furry fandom. I love making furry content for everyone. And I think one of the things that I've been struggling with since making this channel is really that separation between my personal life and my public life. It seems kind of silly to say this, but in a micro sense, people with a large following in this community are to some extent a public figure. And when you're a public figure, there's a lot of people who know who you are, but you don't know them. And for me, it's been challenging navigating how much should I open up? Should I share my whole life? Should I share any of my life? And the general conclusion I've come to across 2019 was that I largely want to be an entertainer. I want to put smiles on people's faces and I want my life like ogres and onions to have layers for me to have passions and aspects of my life that aren't shared on camera. For the people who do get to know me to understand that there is way more to me than just the YouTube videos I make. And this is one of the back and forths I've been experiencing because I do love sharing my life and who I am. But as my channel has grown and I've achieved some success on this platform, I've realized that I don't want my entire identity revolving around being a YouTuber because that is certainly a pathway way that you can go on on this platform. But I've realized that for me, it's not a healthy balance. Now I'm not knocking people who do because for some people, YouTube is the biggest passion that they have in their lives and that's awesome. And right now I'm super committed to growing my channel and making fun quality content for y'all. But for me personally, the growth and innovation in content that you've seen on my channel has come as a result of all the experiences I've had outside the community. All of the friendships and the life experiences that I haven't had on camera being a YouTuber, having a bunch of subscribers, being able to create and make anything you want and entertain thousands and thousands of people is a huge dream come true. It really is. Which is also why I've been very hesitant to make a video like this because I don't want to seem ungrateful because I think I am very grateful. But what they don't tell you about blowing up in popularity is that your life is altered. Sometimes in small ways, but sometimes in larger ways. And if I can sum up how I've been feeling in a little tidbit, sometimes the attention of being a public figure in this little niche can be pretty overwhelming. So I started this YouTube channel, believe it or not, about three years ago. March of 2017 was when I first started regularly uploading. I remember posting that furry trash video and then just seeing hundreds and then thousands of views rolling in. And practically overnight, my life in this little niche of the furry fandom changed. I went from hyena fursuiter to nuss. And my experiences at conventions changed. It went from me just kind of walking around to honestly being overwhelmed with attention. When you put a piece of your heart and soul into content and then people come up to you in real life and say that's awesome that's just such a really amazing feeling inside and in 2017 I was super enjoying the ride because this was something new this is something I'd never experienced before and I was so happy to meet everyone that wanted to come up and say hi I could always make time to message anyone who wanted to message me if anyone wanted to chat and be my friend I could make time for that but what basically happened is in 2017 my channel was a lot smaller. In 2020, I sit here three years later and now my channel's three times bigger. My channel's basically my job. You know, I've graduated college. I have to find a way to make ends meet and thankfully lucky to all my fan support and all my patrons. I'm living out my dreams. But the big change between three years ago and now is three years ago, I could make time for everyone who wanted to get to know me. But now having a lot of in real life furry friends, people I know outside of the YouTube community who I consider close and best friends. And then I have a lot of people who are fans, very friendly, very sweet, very kind. That's getting to the stage where there's just too many people to see. And three years ago in some ways, yeah, I guess I could please everyone, but 
These days I can't, and I've really realized that I can only try my best, but sometimes I just don't have the energy at conventions and real life events to be as sociable and as outgoing as when I started this channel three years ago. So over the last three years, I've really had to make this shift from people pleasing and trying to make everyone around me happy to making sure that my happiness comes first. And I know that sounds selfish, but I think the best way I can connect with all my viewers is by making the best possible content I can. And that sometimes means taking a little extra time to take care of myself, not putting myself out there publicly, like suiting less at cons and making sure I have that separation between professional professional and personal because furry is now a job for me and for me having no separation between those two lives has been pretty hard because you know there's always this constant thought while I'm browsing Twitter or expressing my opinion online or whatever it is there's always that lingering thought is this gonna affect my livelihood so in a way this has created a level of I guess baseline anxiety like I've definitely worked through it and I have to say coming into this year I feel the most centered and the most stress-free I felt for a while. And a big part of that was not devoting all of my time to furry YouTube, putting my eggs in other baskets so that when I do come back to the content that I make for y'all here, I have energy from the outside to bring to this channel. And I find myself very happy with the content I'm putting out and me really enjoying what I'm doing. Like I've reignited my passion for YouTube, which is why I'm not quitting, which is why I'm putting out a ton more content. And then I think there's a whole aspect of being a public figure where you don't feel like you're being treated like a human being or a normal person. And I know that sounds like such a privileged thing to say, and I don't expect people to relate to this or empathize with this, but you put out enough content, you self-promote enough, and then there's that certain percentage of people that only have nasty things to say about you. And the thing is, I'm the sort of person that would give the advice and I try and take my own advice that it's like, oh, don't let it affect you, you know, you don't know what they're going through. They might be projecting their own insecurities or they're having a bad day. But when it becomes a regular thing, it's hard to brush off and just say, oh, ignore the haters, F the haters. I don't think it's so negatively affected my life that I've changed what I do, but I certainly read my tweet replies less. I certainly mute more people. And when I meet people who have no idea what I do online in this community, there's almost this kind of sense of relief you know, this clean slate. And I think it, little experiences like that, it definitely added to my sense of overwhelm, but it also reaffirmed to me that having a life in furry outside of YouTube was the right choice. Like I really leaned on my partner and friends for emotional support and just great times over the last couple of years. And to be really blunt, I think I've just struggled with the attention a decent amount because I know I can't please everyone who wants something from me. And I also know that there are a certain percentage of people who only want to get to know me because they perceive me as having a certain amount of access to people or things that they want. And I've talked to other YouTubers about this, but sometimes you get this little bit of distrust in people. Like, what are their motivations? Are they really being nice to me? Or are they trying to gain something from me? And I just want to reinforce that like 90%, 95% of the interactions I have in real life at cons online are great. And for the most part, I love my followers, my subscribers, my fans. And over the years, there's been a lot of people who discovered who I was through my channel that have become good friends of mine. But over the years, there's definitely been times where I felt very, very visible and I want those opportunities to be invisible. But I accept that's a part of my profession relating to being a public figure. Like I get recognized out of suit. And the, once again, like it's usually great. It's usually awesome. But there are definitely times where I've had bad or negative experiences or uncomfortable experiences that have unfortunately soured the enjoyment I sometimes have of running around solo and suited at a con. It's just, there's definitely been times where my YouTube channel has created a lot of stress for me in my personal life, which is why at times I've really taken a step back. And one of the ways that I've adapted to this overwhelm is by being really, really boundaried at times. So that means, yeah, not going out and suiting at cons as much. And I've also made my personal life in a lot of ways less accessible to the public. There's definitely a separation between the content I put out and the person I am day to day. And for right now, that's where I'm happy with my life being. I like y'all seeing the tip of the iceberg with my life and, and if y'all have the opportunity to get to know me on a more personal level, 
well, great. You can find out, you know, in person. But that wanting to be boundaried is why I don't have a Discord server. And I'm not responding to messages and emails as much as I used to. Because at the end of the day, I think the best way to connect with so many people is through my content. I do truly think that I give a piece of myself with every little bit of content that I put out there. And I'm just so grateful that y'all are along for the journey with me. And really, the reason why I wanted to talk about these things this video is because I am now really in a place where I feel like I have a good separation between my public and personal life. And I am enjoying what I do. And my passion really has been reignited for YouTube. And despite all this coronavirus stuff, at least on a content level, I think things are gonna keep chugging along at the same pace that they have been recently. Because I feel like I've been able to spend enough time to focus on what's important so that I can create better content for y'all. Gosh. I don't think I even was able to say all the things I wanted to say. Because I think one of the hardest things about being a YouTuber is there's this constant pressure to put out content and put out content, optimize everything for the algorithm because if YouTube's algorithm doesn't put you on, well, then your viewers are gonna shrink and so is your business. And it is really hard when, you know, you have high functioning mental health symptoms and you wanna push out content, but it's like squeezing blood out of a stone. You wanna just work, 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 but you don't feel inspired and you don't feel at ease enough to just put out stuff. So that's been the struggle on and off over the last couple of years. Even if I haven't been feeling the best, finding a way to make content for y'all and entertain people. I'm just so lucky and so grateful that I have such a supportive community. So even if I did only put out one video in a month, my amazing, awesome, supportive, patrons and fans are still helping me live out my dreams and to get to this point where I'm actually feeling a ton better and really psyched about everything I'm doing and putting out four videos in a month for the first time since who knows when the reason why I got here was because of y'all so that now that I feel like I'm thriving more you'll have stuck with me through the harder times and now in these thriving times I just feel like we're gonna have a ton of fun and you're gonna see plenty more content from me than you're used to. And one last thing, oh, there's so many topics I wanted to cover but I didn't even get to. I just feel so much more comfortable with making whatever damn content I wanna make because no matter what I put out, the skits, the vlogs, the silly music videos, y'all keep showing up and supporting what I do. And I truly cannot do this without every single one of you. I have no intention of quitting YouTube. I just wanna keep going. Keep expanding not only my furry presence, but my IRL human channel presence too. And I kind of just want to build off this momentum I've created and forge ahead and keep making fun videos and keep entertaining y'all. And just with a huge sense of gratitude for everyone who's helped me along the way, whether it was way back in March, 2017, or last week, everyone who's helped out throughout the journey, y'all have helped me continue to live my dreams. And for that, I am extremely grateful. And that might be a good place to stop this video. I am getting dehydrated. I was taking breaks in between to have water and whatnot, but I think I've run out of water. So that is probably a good place to stop. Your regularly scheduled NUS Hyena program continues. And um, we're about two thirds through the month, but we've got the fourth video for this month out. So I'm sure you'll see more videos and streams this month for sure. Just kind of riding out this epidemic in the basement, got a lot of free time, got a lot of ideas circulating around the head. I just thought it would be good to let y'all know what I've been up to because it's been a while since I've talked about my personal life and what I've been going through, voice crack. <laughs> and now that things are much more regular in terms of uploads, I just wanted to let y'all in and let y'all know what's been happening. So this is probably the most personal, most serious video you'll see from me for a while. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I'm not quitting. I am not quitting at all. I'm ready to forge ahead. Thank you for taking the time to listen. And I just appreciate every single one of you. And yeah, shout out to my super secret patrons. I'm Nasaina, and I will catch you next time. I need a drink of water now. Yay!